guys. I uh, hope everyone's keeping okay. And uh, we we are going to do some stuff online. I hope uh, everyone will let them try. Yeah, so each week there will be two different activities. The first one will be um, an activity or a craft of some of some description. It might be an old game that you remember from BB, it might be a craft or it might be something else. But each week we'll guide you through it um, and do it along with you. And if it's a quiz or anything, we'll give you answers at the end. And also boys, um, we're going to have our story like we would always have in BB Night. And this year we're going to sort of follow the topic of different jobs in the Bible and different people in the Bible and their occupations. So um, BB's going to be a wee bit different because obviously we're online, we're not in the hall, which is very unfortunate. Um, but hopefully if the things get better, uh, we'll be able to get back in the hall at some stage, hopefully in the not too distant future. So we hope you enjoy this. We'll try and get one of these out every couple of weeks. And uh, just going to pass you back now to Sarah, who's going to do an activity with us tonight. So tonight's activity is going to be the emoji game. I'm not sure if we've done this in BB um, in person, but it's a really simple game and I'm going to explain it to you in a minute. So what you're going to see on the next couple of slides is maybe one emoji, maybe two, maybe a couple more. And all you have to do is guess which movie it's from. So it could be a specific film or it could just be like an overall film. Um, and you'll see what I mean when I get to some. I'll explain what I mean by that if we get to one of them. So I'm going to show you 10 different films and then I'm going to go through the answers after. So you're going to need to go and find yourself a pen or pencil and a piece of paper and then we'll be ready to go. So here is the first one. So it's a little magnifying glass and a little blue fish. So if you write down number one, and then what you think this film is. This one gets a little bit harder. We've got four different emojis in this one. So we've got a top hat, a bar of chocolate, a ticket and a factory. What do you think that one could be? This is the one that I mean about the kind of overall movie. So it's got a couple of different emojis here and I want you to figure out what it could be. Um, so you've got an American flag, a uh, angry green man, a bow and arrow, a hammer and a spider. So what could that movie franchise be? So just one emoji for this one. It's just an arrow. This is another movie franchise. So um, it could be any of them. I don't need specific movies. Um, but for a wee clue, there are seven movies in this one. So you have a boy plus a lightning strike plus a pair of glasses. Okay, this one is quite an old movie. I think they've just done a remake of this movie though, but it is a little dog and then some spaghetti, a different type of dog and some paw prints. So what do you think that one could be? This is quite a new movie. It's got a load of different emojis here. So we've got a queer or a woman wearing a crown. We have two people who look very like, so they maybe could be sisters. We have a ring. We have somebody saying no. We have a snowflake and we have a snowman. So what could that be? So this one is another old movie, which has been made into a new one recently. So you've got a sunrise or a sunset, a tiger or a lion. A uh, crying, a warthog, and an elephant. Just two emojis for this one. So it is very self explanatory. I'm not going to say them because you'll get the movie instantly.
This one it may be a little bit tricky, I'm not sure. Um, you can see the emojis again. So you've got an uh, ant or a little bug or something. Um, you've got a man. Um, and then you have a flyy wasp or a bee. So what one could that be? Okay, here we go, it's answer time. Um, if you do need more time to um, think about some of those movies, why don't you pause this video um, and go back and make sure you have 10 answers um, before I go through them all. Um, but if you are ready to go, then let's go. So number one, we had a magnifying glass and a blue fish. So it was Finding Dory. If you're finding Nemo, I'm sorry, it's not. Nemo is definitely an orange fish and this is definitely a blue fish. So it's definitely Finding Dory. The next one is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So you've got Willy Wonka's um, hat, a bar of chocolate, a golden ticket and the factory. So that one's quite easy. So this is the one I was talking about, about all the films combined. So this one was The Avengers. This one could have been really simple or it could have been really tricky. It was up, so the arrow was pointing upwards, so it was up. And again, another movie franchise. This was Harry Potter, so a little boy with the lightning strike for the scar that was on his forehead and his glasses, so Harry Potter. It doesn't matter if you've written um, like the names of the movies, as long as you've written Harry Potter, that's okay. So this one was Lady and the Tramp. So two different dogs with some spaghetti and some paw prints. This one should be easy too. Um, it was Frozen. Um, again, doesn't matter if you've written Frozen 2 or Frozen 1. I don't really mind. As long as you've written Frozen, that's all good. And this one was The Lion King. So you've got Sunset, a lion, a crown for the king, uh, a warthog and an elephant to represent safari or something. So The Lion King. wasn't going to say these emojis because I literally say what it is and um, so it's a spider and a man so it's a spider man funny enough this one could have been a little bit tricky however I think I probably gave you a massive hint when I started saying what the emojis were so it was an ant and a man and a wasp so it was ant man and the wasp Thank you so much for taking part. Um, each week we are going to do an activity um, and it could look something like this um, with a PowerPoint with some you know, questions answers, like a quiz. Um, it could be a craft or it could be um, just something like a game for you to play along with. Um, but each week it'll be slightly different. Um, so hope you've enjoyed this week and now Robin is going to teach us our story for today. Well, thanks, Sarah. So, um, as I said at the start of the video, um, we're going to be thinking about occupations, different occupations in the Bible. And obviously in Bible times, there maybe was a few different occupations than there are maybe today. Obviously, we didn't have computer programmers or any things like that. But um, I know some of you are from, either from a farm or from a farming background, or um, you've got relatives and people who live in farms. So we're going to think today about David and the occupation as a shepherd boy. So, of course, David went on to become King David. And if I say the word David to you, he's probably the most well known for 
fight Goliath and defeat him. But this is way before that. This is when David was a little boy, not much older uh, than you guys in his in his teens. Um, his job, um, as you see, was was a shepherd. So when David was a boy, he stayed up on the hills by himself. He was sent there by his dad, and he looked after his father's sheep. And he trusted God to keep him and the sheep safe. And you can see there he had a crook. And uh, in those days, the, the shepherd, you know, they would stay with the sheep uh, just to make sure there was no, there's no fences and stuff to keep them in. So uh, he just looked after them and made sure they get nice, nice grass to eat and nice fresh water to drink. And they came to to know him and to love him and. Uh, whenever he called them, uh, they would come out and follow him. So he sat down under a shady tree to watch a sheep. David loved to pray and sing to God, and he loved God with all his heart. And because of that, God was with David. David knew every sheep by name. Yeah, he could call them out, I don't know what we'd call them, like maybe we call them, I don't know. Reuben or Thomas or Jack or Oliver or whatever um, or Joel but he knew them all he knew them all by name and every night he would find a safe place for the sheep to sleep and he would count them to make sure that they were all there too sometimes he would have to he would maybe find a, a sick sheep or a, a lost lamb David was a good shepherd he loved his sheep and they loved him. David played all day while the sheep ate some grass nearby. David would find some smooth stones and he would throw them in a sling. He became a good shot with a sling. That probably would come in handy later on in his life. So he would aim at things and he would try and hit the mark. That came in handy even before he met Goliath because there was one day, uh, in, in those days, obviously there was no fields and stuff, and David walked over a hill and saw this angry, angry lion, and a hungry lion too, and he probably saw David as his lunch. So David asked God to help him to be brave, and he tried to scare the lion away, but obviously that didn't work. So what did David do then? Well, David got his sling and got a stone and he whirled it round and round and round and round and whoosh, let the stone fly, hit the lion in the head and the lion was no more. So he saved his sheep by defeating the lion. But that wasn't enough or that wasn't the end of it. Because a short time after that, what did David see then? But a hungry bear. And this wasn't a cuddly teddy bear, as you can see. This guy was fierce. Roar. David asked God to help him to be brave again. And again, he tried to scare the bear off with his, uh, with his crook. But the bear wasn't having any of it. The bear spied the sheep and spied David. And uh, he thought he was going to have his own bear snack for lunch. So what did David do? same thing again you can see there he got his uh, stone and put it in a sling and whirled it round and round and whoosh again smack and the old bear fell down no more he protected his sheep once more now David knew that he wasn't you know he wasn't some superhuman he knew that he was able, only able to protect the sheep and do anything because God was helping him. So he sang a song to God. You can see there he played the harp and he sang a song that said, Thank you, God, for saving me from the lion and the bear. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. And David wrote many songs like that and they're actually in the Bible. Um, so they are. They're, they're in the book of Psalms. And uh, there's lots of different things for different occasions. 
So David didn't have to be afraid. He didn't know what was going to happen. But he trusted in Jesus. And well, he trusted in God. And God knew. Uh, God knows everything, so God protected him. And it's a bit like us today, guys. You know, it's, we're living in very uncertain, very strange times. And we hear things in the news. And, you know, even things like we don't have TV at the minute. Because of coronavirus and the schools are off and um, you know there's only certain things you can do you maybe can't go see your friends as well and it's not it's not very nice and it can be a bit worrying but the great thing is that if we're ever worried or if we're ever concerned or if we're not sure what's happening we just have to remember that God is in heaven and God is in control and if we are ever worried or nervous all we have to do is to close our eyes and pray and ask, ask God to help us. Because God loved us so much that uh, he sent Jesus to this earth to help us and to show us how we should live. And if we ask Jesus or ask God for help, he will try and help us. Now, just before we go here, guys, we're going to have a little prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for David. We thank you for how even when he was a wee boy, a uh, wee young fellow, Lord, that you were even using him then and how you helped and protected him and kept him safe in the situations he had when he was looking after his sheep. And Lord, we thank you how you help us and how you protect us and how you look after us. And we would just pray, and we just pray that for each and every boy, Lord, that you would just watch over them and their families and keep them safe at the moment, Lord, uh, from everything that's going on. We thank you, Lord, that we can uh, meet over over the internet here, Lord. And even though it's not the same, Father, I would just pray that the you know the boys would feel would feel part of uh, the BB, Lord, and that you would just continue to be with them and help them over the the next couple of weeks when they're off school. We just thank you for hearing these prayers and we offer it up now in Jesus' name. Amen. Goodness, the bear's back again. Um, guys, thanks very much uh, for tuning in to this. We're going to try and do this for a wee while. We hope that we will be able to meet again face to face at some stage. Um, probably not for, for a wee while though, uh, with the current restrictions. Uh, our aim is to try and put one of these videos up every two weeks. Um, we'll stick it up on YouTube and we'll try and get the premiere at 7 o'clock on a Friday night, which of course from BB would normally be meeting. Uh, so the, the link will be emailed beforehand to someone at home, so you'll be able to hopefully get a wee look. But even if you can't watch it at 7, you don't have to watch it at 7, you can click that link any time after 7 o'clock on the Friday night and it will be up forever and you can watch it. If you're really bored you can watch it as many times as you want okay so we'll try and get something new each couple of weeks and uh, there's a wee email address there at the bottom uh, that's for the church office and if you need to get in contact for anything if you just drop an email uh, to Alison there she'll pass it on to us but uh, thank you very much and we hope you've a good I uh, hope you've enjoyed this week off and we hope you've a, a good week off next week as well and that the weather maybe picks up a bit too so take care of yourselves and we'll chat to you soon. Bye.